arrives in his new location and I love the use of the camera kind of panning upside down almost similar to when we saw Apollo crossing the bridge but you'll notice that Emma's body if this is a new realm didn't reject it the same way that Apollo's did. I believe just like the island that this particular new location under the ground is almost maybe protected under a spell. You can only be invited to this little location or this new realm as we meet this new character by the name of Wills who to me definitely is the hatter of the situation. He's literally wearing a hat, he speaks in riddles and he drinks tea as he is a part and the leader of the mole people. In our reality, mole people, also known as tunnel people or tunnel thrillers, are homeless people living under large cities in abandoned subways, railroads, flood sewage tunnels, and heat shafts. This is a way that the show is kind of connected into our reality of these people that have been lost, abandoned, or forgotten by society. As we get to see the layout of what they call the Grand Central Community, they're always been on the ground, they have no segregation of people, people are welcome of all colors and backgrounds, and they have a whole different world down here. Again, this is definitely giving me fairy tale vibes or Alice in the Wonderland as he shows her all his interesting things. Did you all know originally that it was going to be titled Alice Adventures Underground, which to me just gives this even more meaning. Emma eventually makes her way to the surface and she's online searching where she can find all the locations of the Norway maple trees in New York, but one of the employees of the library arrives a little bit sooner than expected as we see Emma has to hide from her. Now, in hiding, she begins to hear screaming upstairs and this is a great kind of call back again the whole theme in this episode is there's two sides of the story so we see the other side of the situation where emma sees apollo from the time he held the gun to the librarians as we see that she was eventually chased out by the police but manages to escape on will's bike Emma gives him the book that he requested for in exchange for helping her. Will suggests that she starts with Little Norway. Now this was started in 1825. Those were the first immigrants arrived there and they happened to have a forest. This reference here of 1825 being the first immigrants of Little Norway to me connects to the same people from episode one who were traveling across the seas to arrive at this location. Now as far as the timeline goes, we see that Emma tells Mr. Wills that she wants to meet him the following night. So to me in my head canon, I believe that everything we saw in the previous episode kind of lines up to where Emma is so we might have and I'm going to talk about this a little later at the end of this video Cal might suggest to Apollo that he go visit Wills and this is where he might be reunited with Emma. As we end the episode with Emma having given more books to the library and she begins her journey to find Brian and she won't be seen again if she does ultimately find him. As Emma gives Cal the book that she eventually gave Apollo. Now this is a very interesting line and it kind of confused me. Let's break it down. As Emma tells Cal to give Apollo the book and this is where it gets interesting. She also tells Cal to tell Brian who is Apollo's father that Apollo wished he could have read the book to him more when he was growing up. Now, I could be wrong, but I took that as when she said Brian, she was not talking about baby Brian because obviously they don't know where he is, but she was referring to the adult of Brian, the father of Apollo, which to me means he's alive and Emma knows about this and also Cal knows about this. My husband was obsessed with it. Will's dad used to read it to him when he was little. Well, tell Brian Apollo was so looking forward to doing the same. Did I read that wrong? Let me know your thoughts on that. As Emma is off to find Brian in the forest of the Norway, as she says her goodbyes to Cal, who brought her to rest and to get her mind right so she can clearly see things better because there are always two sides of seeing things. As Emma sails away, we see this bluish glow surrounding her as Mama is coming for her son. Was that a protection spell that Emma put on herself? Again, not knowing she has these abilities or being very aware of what she's able to do and what she's capable of. Is this just like maybe a natural aura that's always been surrounding her just showing how powerful of a witch Emma actually is? So obviously that brings the question up, where is Brian? Was he in the grand community and we just didn't see him? Has he been looking for Apollo this whole time? So is it safe to assume that Brian's gonna be in the Norway Force? He's with his people, his Norwegian bloodline, as I talked about in my theory last week that I believe it is all in the bloodline that Apollo has that Norwegian in his bloodline and that's what kind of created Brian baby Brian becoming that changeling which on the point of the family of Brian Apollo and Lillian where has she been? We haven't seen her in a couple weeks, but more importantly, the red suitcase scenario. Going back to me connecting this episode to Alice in the Wonderland, tying the red suitcase to who could be the Red Queen in this situation. 
Can we trust Lillian? Was Brian trying to save their son from her? Could it be a similar situation where Lillian is a similar witch to the one in Brazil? Remember, there's always two sides of the story. We've only seen her side of the story, which makes me go into the Kim of it all. Do we know her involvement? Also, Patrice. What I like about this episode, it wasn't as exciting or frightening as last week's episode, but I love how this continues to move the story forward. As Emma learns more about things, so do we. It's safe to assume that Emma has found this magical, mythical forest and Apollo's headed that way as well and maybe Brian can be found there as well. And this might be a little bit too on the nose but the truth is there are two sides of the story and I love that theme going throughout the episode. We saw Apollo's side of the story of him dealing with the situation. Now we get to see Emma's side of the story which adds more depth, it adds more layers, it adds more perspective to the character but also again, what is it about Kim? What is her side of the story? What is Lillian's side and what we think is it's a truthful side? What does Brian have to do with all this? I'm referring to the adult version of Brian. So again, two sides of the story. Can we trust the characters that we've trusted so far? Very, very interesting theme and I'm really liking where that's headed. So overall, a solid episode. Again, I, I preferred last week, but a solid episode nonetheless. But hey, those are my thoughts. Those are my theories. I hope you all enjoyed today's breakdown. And if you have some thoughts, theories, predictions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Again, I want to thank you all for watching today's breakdown of episode six of The Changeling. Before we wrap it all up, consider hitting the like button, sharing today's breakdown, leaving your thoughts in the comments, subscribing to the channel. You all are awesome. Hope you're staying safe and I'll catch you all on the next video.